The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. at these fucking ratings and uh, I just want to let everybody know out there it's getting a little fucking crowded up at the top so I just want to tell everybody fair warning I'm putting a gun in my mouth tonight alright anyone who cares to pay fucking attention to me again I'm putting a motherfucking gun in my mouth as soon as you get off the motherfucking air so I'll see you motherfuckers next week we'll see what happens Steve where are those motherfucking ratings god damn where are those bitches look at this shit I'm going to put a fucking gun in my mouth with a noose around my neck and a fucking bazooka up my ass. See how you do next week, motherfucker. Peace out. How the hell did he get in here? Still in first place. Jesus. Jesus. Uh, yeah, it's getting crowded. It's getting, you know, it's getting crowded at the top, though. It's getting yeah. crowded. Obviously, I made it through another week. Yes. Good to see you. <laughs> I have to start every week with that. Good to see you. <laughs> And I also, I had like a, a Chicago Bulls sh- shirt on earlier, and I said, "Boy, that's really gonna c- clash with my uh, my artwork." So I had to fucking quickly, Ooh, yeah. quickly throw the. Now that uh, shirt, either says manifesting or man fisting. Man fisting. Okay. Man fisting. Yeah. It's from the it's from the movie Cruising. Good. Yeah, cool. Cruising. <laughs> I, I was gonna go with Deliverance, but <laughs> how far off was I? Not far. So I heard you had a successful pitch to NBC. Oh, I'm unbelievable! About your new uh, yeah, show. It's unbelievable! Breaking news! Breaking news! So, you know, the, the chance of, of of ever getting anything, I mean, even to development. But the, I, I I went ahead and, and pitched today, and I said to them, I said, "This is the concept." I said, "So you're telling me this is the name of the show." So you're telling me you don't have classified information. I love it. And you got three people, they question them, and of course, by the end of the show, they all say nothing. Then two days later, everybody mm-hmm. has classified information. Including the live studio audience. They yeah, say. everybody. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 Under it, the it, seats. At this point, you know, you ever heard of Heifer? Heifer? Yeah, heifer where you could like it, it, at Christmas time you can buy somebody like a a, a, a cow. <laughs> like you, yeah, you no, you, you, I you, never no, have. You, you, so you give money. Yeah. And like my wife and I are, are are huge on doing this, and you'll get like a couple of cows, some goats, and you'll send it to like a a, a tribe or some some underprivileged people, and and they, if maybe Steve, you can find a, a heifer international. It's a, 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 oh, I thought a, for a minute you were sending it to Steve. I, I, no, no. He, he's just, plenty well-fed. He doesn't need any more food sent to him, believe me. No. So um, I think it's, instead of uh, Heifer this, this, uh, this Christmas, a lot of people will probably be uh, sending them. I'm gonna, yeah, there it is, Heifer International. Wow, okay. And, uh, I mean, it's a great, it's a great if you, for people that have it, and we all have those people that don't have, you know, that have everything. This is just something that's uh, um, it's my my wife and I send this is for everybody gets this for Christmas. This is what you get. You get a card that says that you gave a, a cow or you know. I prefer I, the crab cakes if if I have a choice. <laughs> to be honest, the Jimmy well, Seafood. But this this year we're we're actually going to give out classified information. <laughs> so. You have a little bit laying around. Yeah, I just I mean, well, who doesn't? Fuck! It's right next to it's right next to my fucking uh, Al, autograph LK line uh, picture and a and a and a bat day when I was at my uncle's house in Strongville. We went to the Cleveland Indians game. Uh, what do I have here? A banner, an <laughs> Art Shamsky card. Up, up. FBI, nineteen seventy-seven. Holy shit! 
Uh, if you have any of those Kennedy ones, I'd like to take a look at those. Yeah. I, I just uh, only thing I could find was the actual autopsy pictures of Oswald. So uh, I've got those. At least you got those. Yeah, I got those going for Good me. for framing. Yeah. Holidays. Oh, some feedback from you guys from our show last week, which ended up being a live uh, live audience show. Uh, the Bearded Mohawk has said, so I just got done watching Kev's rant on today's pussies. Man, I felt that when he said he raised a man. As a father myself, that, uh, that has a hard time not knocking heads together. Everyone I go around this generation of pussies, I say cheers. He nailed it. So shout out to your parenting from the bearded mohawk. For Dunk of shame. Lindsay the Cupcake Girl. You remember her, right? Yes. Um, an unfortunate email. She said she wanted to thank you for sharing your grief and grieving process with us all. Um, I didn't know I would find a common bond with you that way. And now that I have, I fully relate. It's a hard club to be in, but it helps when you know your feelings aren't unique. She lost her father this week from cancer. Oh, God. So, so sorry. So, Lindsay, our condolences... Nothing. I mean, it's nothing. It's nothing you can say. It's just. It's the journey. It's, just, yeah. it's the journey in real time. Uh, Uber Goth. Hey Kevin, I've owned my 05 GT for 13 years. Bought it in 2010 with only 15k on the dash. Just hit 78k. That is your year, right? 05. Yeah, I, yeah. But my, the only difference is I bought mine in 05. But uh, no, great. They're, they're they're really really great cars. I just had uh, my my uh, front seats reupholstered this week. How so. is there like constant maintenance? If you want to keep this thing twenty years, are you just how often are you bringing it in? I, I have put it, mine has one hundred and thirty thousand miles. I have put. Three sets of Z-rated tires on it, and I've changed the oil. I have, I mean, I'm, I'm meticulous on maintenance. Okay. I ro rotate the tires and change the oil every 7,000 miles. I run synthetic. Um, I have had, and mine's tuned, you know, mine's all tuned and got a you know special uh, cool air intake and uh, special exhaust. That, that it rode up. great. I was in it. It, it rode great. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You, you wouldn't I mean, it just, I've, I've got up, upgraded suspension, upgraded uh, mm -hmm. brakes. Yeah, of course. But I, to, I don't have any, I mean, I've never, I have no wood around here. Let me, let me take a blue chew and wait a minute. I'll, I was going to say, I can knock a solution it, I can, for that. I can knock some, I can knock some wood. But, uh, yeah, no, it's it's been... It's one of those things, man, I have never, and that's the next thing I'm going to do is mine doesn't have the GT hood on it, but my hood is starting to rust because I live on the beach, and um, I'm looking for, there's a couple of different styles that they make aftermarket, fiberglass, so I'm probably going to get a, a hood, and then I'll probably paint, I'll go ahead and paint it, but I was just... I, talked to this guy and he told he, he, he talked me down to sanding it down to the you know the, the metal and you know taking all the imperfections out i can't walked out of the gym the other day and somebody keyed the motherfucker from bumper to bumper yours yes yes i guess fucking when he found out i was alive he was like this motherfucker yeah i was gonna say it was probably tatanka but yeah Jury's still out. Or you know what? It might have been Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that 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 hood's pretty. That, that, I like that. That's a, that's a sweet fucking. So joke. the standard GT hood is just the the. I just have the hood. Mine's a hood. I have a right, G but you want to put on the one with the. Uh... I want to put on something that just looks a little aftermarket. Right. Okay. Very good. Maybe under goth. Maybe you can follow suit. Josh Henney, top guy. Says, oh, whoa, uh, pull, pull, hold on a second. Pull that yeah. back there, Steve. What do we got? He pulled up some. These all the yeah. hood options for you. Yeah. I, I like that. I mean, even that white one on the side there is pretty fucking sweet. I see the stripes a lot. The, the I'm center not, I'm stripes. Not that, I'm not that. That's, yeah, it might be too much, though. 
That's a fucking like Venice Beach muscle car kind of deal there, right? Yeah, it's, it takes Huge away from it. For I like I, I I I I've got more of that uh, Steve McQueen bullet kind of feel mm. in my car. So we'll we'll, we'll look. Okay. Uh, Josh Henney, definitely been hooked for a while. I'm almost caught up. Uh, I have been lucky to be a part of a few live recordings. These guys are absolutely awesome together. You guys can, too. We try to do one a month. Did two this month. And then uh, go to adfreeshows.com and be a part of it. The Kiwi Dragon, for goodness sakes, has reached out. Good God. I got a bit more of a laugh from that Scott bit at the start than I probably ought to have. I bet if he could see it, he'd have gotten a kick out of it. As for the best ex-wrestler podcast, that's absolutely why I'm still here week after week. Just a chill environment with a good laugh. This is one of only two ex-wrestler podcasts I regularly listen to, the other being William Regal's before that wrapped up. So that's gone with the wind now, Steve Regal? Yeah, Steve's done. Okay. Scottish Bolshevik. Probably waiting on some of those ad, ads <laughs> motherfuckers to pay. When that comes through and he can buy a meal. Yeah. He'll be, when he can pay the... All I want. <laughs> Scottish Bolshevik. Find myself watching this podcast more and more. Got me hooked first time I listened. Kev is a very down-to-earth guy. Wears his emotions on his sleeve and very intelligent. Sean compliments this pod perfectly. All power to you guys, thanks. Gets me through some bad days. I see that a lot, that it's a comfort, it's like comfort food for people, you know, in, in their weeks of strife. The, uh, this is a safe place for them to come and just have people a People always ask me, they said, if you could explain, like, you know, what your pod, I said, this, this fucking podcast is a chicken pot pie. Just boom, just comfort food. Yeah. You know? We don't ask too much of you to come in oh, here. Oh, hell no. You know. We don't have to talk literature. You can just come and put your feet up and have a cocktail. We'd prefer that you'd have classified information. (laughs) I mean, fuck. If you're one of seven that don't, fuck, you know. Uh, You know, um, I know you've been tallying the cost of of our support of the Ukraine. Yes. And um, looking at where we are exactly and uh i think we might have broke the bank as today i actually about an hour before we came on i saw that 31 tanks are on their way to the ukraine at a price tag of what you say about a about a buck and a half each about a million and a half you know i i actually looked that up and i was really off so when they originally like one of the first uh these tanks, I don't know if they still are, but they, they, were, they were built in the Detroit area of General, General Dynamics that uh, had, had, had built these, uh, these tanks. And I want to say the first order of, fuck, it was like 100 or so. Uh, the first 100 tanks was like 309 uh, it's like three million a tank, and then it, then I looked at another thing, and they said, you know, it's like six. Now the new ones, uh, adjusted to inflation, are like almost nine million dollars a piece. So the, I mean, just like anything else, you know, a tank in 1980, a tank in 2023. Sure. When these yeah. can these have fuel options now, of course, the diesel or the jet fuel. Yes, that, I, that um, was my that was I think or orange they, juice. Yeah, that was my favorite thing. The the, the, the guy from the Pentagon saying that uh, we can't send these because it's uh, just not economical since they run on jet fuel or kerosene or fucking anything else you've got in your house. What a bunch of shit. So the Abrams tank. T- tell the you're a, you're a military guy. We're not. Tell us the benefit of the Abrams tank. Um, the Abrams tank, a was. I mean, it'll flat do fifty miles an hour on a flat surface. I mean, on a road, it'll go fifty miles an hour. Um, they're, ga- they're of course they're gas hogs. Um, I want to think that flat surface, maybe three miles to the gallon. Uh, battlefield conditions, maybe 0.6. Mm. 
you know, so I mean, they're 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 gas hogs. Um, they got a one uh, 120 millimeter uh, smooth bore uh, main tank main gun, uh, and that can be fired. Uh, I, I think the la- they have a laser um, like type thing that can hook and uh, and establish where even if, if if it's going over, you know, terrain like that, it locks. The, yeah, right? the, the the barrel still fires at about 300 meters. They 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 don't miss. Um, <clears throat> so I, I I looked up now. I don't know how I, I don't know how correct this is and if somebody out there can find any information we have only lost since the conception and they've built 10,500 of these M1 tanks so since the conception of the tank we've lost nine of them that's incredible seven to friendly fire and two that we destroyed because we didn't want to get them in the Iraqis hands so, in essence, we've never lost one of these tanks in battle. Hmm. If you guys remember when it was going to be the mother of all wars and uh, Saddam Hussein, you know, had his imperial guard and, you know, they, they brought, God, I forget how much armor they had, but we had these little, little, little pesky things called A-10s, warthogs, and then we just went up and down the columns and just annihilated and... The Russians have T-72s, T-80s, and then T-90s. And then now they have, it's called a T-14 Armada. And that's their newest tank. It's been, uh, it was basically designed 2015. Um, It's very, very, very expensive, of course, to to make, especially if you're making protos. Um, But they're now saying, and you know, take this with a grain of salt in your own classified information, that they're, they, they've spotted 20 such tanks uh, that, that are, yeah. This is their newest. Um, and people are wondering what that, that's, that's actually armor uh, plating. A lot of that stuff, will ha- as the round gets closer, it explodes outwards. To take to make the impact uh, in between the vehicle and the uh, round itself before it makes actual contact with the the armored vehicle. So, but that that that, that that's the Armada. It's a three man crew, and they they sit in a, in a an armored capsulized uh, area inside the, the battle tank, and it's not uh, they're they're they're, they're not around the ammunition and everything else. So survivability uh, and that is supposed to be greater mm. if you can fucking make one. Mm-hmm. So. So that's what the Russians are, are unveiling. So they say, but I mean, they, as far as I'm concerned, man, it, I, every time I watch the news, boy, there's a bunch of rusted pieces of shit laying around that got, got the fuck blown out by some Ukrainians. <laughs> Well, they're getting rid of those first before they... Yeah, they, yeah. They, they're going to try and wear down the... It's dodgeball. Uh, Put the kids out there with the glasses first. Exactly. <laughs> then it becomes a game. <laughs> um, yeah. so we, we're, we're, we're sending them all, all together. We're going to send them 100 tanks, everybody. Germany kicking in 10? Right. We, st- we still need... You know, uh, sixty, I think, to or, or fifty nine. I think we thirty one, and then ten, and then. The, the, let's but see what the, else but we everybody got. else, everybody else that has a leopard too, uh, now because Germany gave the okay because we sent the Abrams. Um, they uh, they are giving the okay for Poland. I think. Maybe Norway has some. Some of the other uh, NATO uh, countries have uh, the leopards, so they're they're saying it's it's close to with the with the ten it'll be close to seventy. With the thirty we give them, it'll be a, 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 a real close to a hundred uh, main battle okay. tanks. Okay, all right, good to but see it, everyone it, participating. Yeah, Sweden they're, getting they're, involved. They're going to send a Schwinn. What are they going to send? Yeah, some, some, some cheese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking wheel of cheese. 
you know, the the other thing crowding the news is, of course, the uh, the documents, the classified documents. Pence now uh, in the news about this, and um, I saw a tweet from you, a charming tweet to a Miss Crowley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> who, who who had some suggestions about who who should be uh, maybe investing? They yeah. love to go to Obama. They love the Obama. Her name is Meyer. She is Monica. Here's old Monica Crowley. Do Barack and Michelle Obama have classified documents? I don't know, bitch. Why would Michelle have him? Oh, I know why. Maybe because she's. Black? They just because could not get of, over that the not, black guy wanted yeah, that. None yeah. of the none of the fucking white bitches that are married to the fucking other fucking pricks, I guess, right? None of them bitches are fucking oh wow, Michelle. You know what though? There was a little rumor that popped out and they were saying how, you know, uh, what's gonna happen is Michelle's gonna run for president in, in twenty four and she's gonna fucking mop up. And I guess that's why she got heat, right? Because now you got to dump. If her name came out. Preventive attack. Yeah. And if anybody read her book, she fucking hated. Yeah. She almost wanted to. I think she might. She probably commit, would, would, would thought about don't committing even, suicide. Don't, <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're back in the news. We're back oh, in the I'm news. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <sighs> Jesus. God. Um. The, like, fuck you, like, what, are you, what are you telling me? Grab another hold? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly. But Grab like, another hold, Nash. Right. Let's leave people with Secret Service protection out of it. Um, but you're right. They they do not want back into Washington in, in, mm. in any capacity. Uh, no. I from saw what her I show up on. God, who showed she show up and she had a green outfit on? She was so chill, man. I'm like, <laughs> don't want, they don't want none of this shit, man. You got to be. You gotta be kidding me! If I, Trump's saying he's, he's he's Green's gonna be Trump's running mate. Fucking M M J G. Yeah, yeah. Well, since everyone at Saturday Night Live would be so excited. Oh, uh, hey, did I, I didn't watch Saturday Night Live this week? Did, did they use Lovitz as Santos? I I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Anyone? Anyone, anyone got any? see that? Anything on that? Uh, Sant- to, Santos yeah. keeps getting better and better. Apparently, he said he was going to donate his uh, hundred and seventy-four thousand dollar annual salary. Um, wasn't well, that's a lie. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, that was too. Yeah, was, exactly. I mean, anything that fucking guy says, you know. He said it on a Brazilian podcast uh, a while ago, and they just. They, I guess he forgot about it, but they yeah. asked him about it uh, while he was waiting for an elevator. I saw it today. Uh, he he wouldn't promise, answer the question. I promise I'm not going to gobble your knob. Yeah, whatever. Just stay the fuck away. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, Lying motherfucker, man. Yeah, he, and he's he just, he. there's something about him that looks rather swarmy as well i just can't believe and i know we've talked about this but as more and more come out i mean it, it not a fucking thing the guy said was true apparently about anything about what he did that day probably but nobody on his opposition team ever researched this never researched him even just the college credentials look at that action right there mm. Pick a fucking hand. Pick a hand. I mean, if there's ever a For a reach around, I think. Pick a fist. (laughs) Listen. (laughs) Listen, to keep keep your energy up, if you're going to be doing a little bit of that Santos action, you better be taking your athletic greens because you are going to get yourself a workout, okay? I personally love them. I know Kev drinks them before his tea. In the morning, and uh, I'm I'm using those very packs that you see right there. And if you're listening, what I'm looking at is the travel pack. They sent a wonderful it was about 15 packs in a uh, in a box for travel packs, and I am down to those now. And um, I started taking it because I'm 
cutting out red meat for the most part, except I know I talk about steak here, right? Uh, other than special occasions, I'm trying to get rid of that, trying to get uh, my gut back into uh, a healthy condition. And I drink it every morning, and it's great. Uh, eight ounces of water, psh, throw the powder in. I'm getting 75 vitamins, high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens, and uh, right in the water, shoot it right down, and then I go about my day. Then I have my tea, matter of fact. Um, and listen, the blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, focus, even aging. Okay? And uh, we are going to make it easy for you to try this. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash click. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash K-L-I-Q. Take ownership over your health. Pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Tastes great, too. That's a big thing for me. I've taken other things, supplements, and pounded six vitamins a day. I get it all right here. All right, it is time to reclaim your health. It's a new year. Arm your immune system with this convenient daily nutritional drink. One scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills. All right, athleticgreens.com slash K-L-I-Q. And they are sponsoring the Stiff One of the Week this week. Um, nice. For this, we are going to Tom Cruise, who stiffs. Uh, now, Tom Cruise, you may know this. You worked with him. He's a Scientologist, and there's some very uh, strict beliefs about Western medicine, and uh, particularly uh, mood or uh, mental health altering uh, medications. So he apparently came out uh, and said something when Brooke Shields talked about postpartum depression, and that she went on um, she went on an antidepressant for that. So this is Tom Cruise uh, confronting Matt Lauer about his coverage brave new world the thing that i'm saying about brooke is that there's misinformation okay and she doesn't understand the history of psychiatry she th she doesn't understand in the same way that you don't understand it man but a little bit what you're saying tom is you say you want people to do well but you want them to do well by taking the road that you approve of as opposed to a road that may work for them no no i'm not well if, if anti depressants work for Brooke Shields, why isn't that okay? I, I disagree with it. And I think that there's a higher and better quality of life. And I think that promoting, for me personally, see you're saying, what, I can't discuss what I want to discuss? No, you absolutely I know, can. But, but Matt, you're going in and saying that, that I can't discuss that. I'm only asking, isn't there a possibility that, do, do you examine the possibility that these things do work for some people? That yes, there are abuses. And yes, maybe they've gone too far in certain areas. Maybe there are too many kids on Ritalin. Maybe electric shock. Too many is... kids on Ritalin. Matt. I'm just saying. But but aren't there Matt. examples where it Matt. works? Matt, Matt, Matt. You, you don't even. You're glib. You don't even know what Ritalin is. <laughs> if you start talking about chemical imbalance, you have to evaluate and read the research papers on how they came up with these theories, Matt. Okay, that's what I've done. And you go and you say, where's the, where's the medical test? Where's the blood test that says how much Ritalin you're supposed to get? You're, you're, it's very impressive to listen to you because clearly you've done the homework and, Matt, and you know glib. the subject. And you should. And, 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 and you should do that also because and, just knowing people who are on Ritalin isn't enough. You should be a little bit more responsible in knowing I'm really. I'm not prescribing Ritalin. This is spoken by a fucking guy <laughs> that taught himself to fly a fighter jet. How am I supposed to take him serious? Oh, wait a minute. I, <laughs> you know what, Tom? Number one, nobody's going to take you serious because you fucking wear a size medium shirt. Okay? That's number one. Number two, sit back, crush up a fucking bowl, put a little fucking fire on it. Get fucking stoned, dude. Because you have to if you fucking, you're fucking buying that whole fucking clear Scientology bullshit. You did, you did compliment his work ethic on the set, right? Oh, he's, he's amazing, he's... but you, you, come on, man. Like, you're pushing religion. 
What's the difference between the guys and the fucking sitting in the 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 uh, uh, giant uh, thrones with the blue hair? On praise the Lord, man. Like you, you look at that eight-year-old kid looks at that and he goes, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> no, I don't want anything to do with that. When you start telling people, "No, I I know because I've read." Okay, so you've read the scientific information on Ritalin. He's who, an expert on Ritalin, apparently. But who who provided that? Somebody provided that that actually made Ritalin. So what you're telling me is the Buick Electra is the best car ever built because I just read the Buick Electra fucking pamphlet. Manual, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> How about that? I pulled out a little deuce and a quarter of Buick Electra out of nowhere. That's fucking... That's uh, Wouldn't know one if it hit me. Oh, yeah, you would. Did it, when did that go out of production? I probably wasn't born yet. Uh, Buick Electra, fuck, I'm going to say 82. All right, I was around. I was around. Um, Dear Sexy, okay, this uh, returning by popular demand straight out of the actual Dear Abby archives. Kevin, giving his advice for free to you all. This is a service, this podcast, for God's sakes. Uh, so we wanted to see what, how he would fare with some of the mail that was sent to the most famous advice columnist of all time, Dear Abby. So, uh, Dear Sexy, here's our first letter, Dear Sexy. I've also ha uh, I have always been a passionate woman mm. with the men I have cared about, and they have reciprocated. I've learned a lot about myself and men as a result. Five months ago, after a long absence from a relationship or dating, I met a man who's two years older than I am. He's extremely well-mannered and sensitive. He's affectionate and seems to care about me. We share many interests and values, and best of all, he can make me laugh. He is healthy and in excellent shape. There's one issue, however, that deeply concerns me. I know that he enjoys sex, but I am sorry to say he's a lousy lover. He told me that he has never been wild and crazy in bed. I don't think one has to be wild and crazy to be a good lover. However, he doesn't even like to kiss. This makes me sad, because I think kissing is an important part of foreplay, and particularly important during the romantic moments. I now find myself holding back when I am intimate with him, and becoming more inhibited as well. After sex, I'm left feeling frustrated, unsatisfied, and sad. I don't like to put so much emphasis on sex, but I think I deserve more consideration. Should I approach him about this, and can I expect him to change? Signed, Needing More in Minneapolis. Was this 1940? <laughs> Jesus. If it was, this would be a very progressive letter. Jesus, are you, are you fucking kidding me? So she's very unsatisfied. She's left unsatisfied in bed. Should she just keep her mouth shut and fire up the, the pocket rocket? No, she needs to find somebody to fuck the dog shit out of her. Maybe some side action. I mean, why get in a relationship and go... It's a, it's <laughs> He's sensitive and makes her laugh. That's apparently very important to her. Well, fuck. Just find some guy with a, with, with a, with a big fucking cock that, 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 that's a freak. And while, while he's fucking, you put Jesselneck on the fucking TV or something. I don't know. This is exactly why I went, that I said that this could be the next segment to replace the Jersey guy. Because after this letter, the answer is you need a guy with a huge cock. That is, ex please don't ever change the formula. How about her question, should I approach him about this? Is this something she should bring up? Yeah, because most were. I I know that if if if, uh, if somebody that I was in, uh, in a relationship with came up to me and goes, uh, could you pass the fucking stevia? And by the way, you are a fucking rotten fuck. Oh, well, thank you, honey. I try not to kiss you whenever I can because your teeth smell like fucking licorice. I mean, there's something going on here. Maybe maybe you know. Maybe like, she's got the issue and he's holding back. Yeah, he's got maybe, some stinky twinky. Something's exactly. going on. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Sw hey, sweetheart, when was the last time you ch checked that fucking yeast oven you got going on down there? Yeah. Pudding. You can smack nah, that with is... a razor, hit it in the shower. Yeah. You, know, you never know. I, I, I remember when I went over to Europe, I was playing ball, man. I did get those, I pulled those girls from the disco 
And I'd be like, if I, they'd take their sweater off, man, they'd have fucking, they'd have the, not only the full bush, but the crab ladder going up to the fucking navel. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, big giant armpits. I mean, I'd be like, you know, the only way I can get off is in the shower. And I'd fucking have, I'd be fucking taking the, if I would have had Manscaped back then, man, I'd have, mm. I was just like, whoa. Yeah, you're full fucking about, ficus tree, right? Yeah, I remember one time I, 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 I haphazardly because of intoxication <laughs> didn't uh, didn't cleanse my palate, <laughs> and uh, I woke up the next day, man, and I couldn't get the funk out of my sheets. Nothing. I just I had to end up. Did just you have t- like? Did you have bread growing in your mouth? Did you have like a Portuguese <laughs> yeah. roll fall out of your mouth when you went I, to brush your teeth? I, I woke. And actually, I had that fucking the little guy from P- Pillsbury, the popping fresh guy. Oh, good dancing on your teeth yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like wow. Chasing you with the toothbrush. Wow. Oof. Ah. Mm. Second letter. <sighs> Second letter. Dear sexy, I am the happily married mother of two teenagers. Something disturbing has happened recently. I find myself attracted to my daughter's boyfriend. He is 19 and I am 46. He's I'm got no- a huge fucking cock. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I, I'm no Mrs. Robinson. And I would never reveal how I feel. When he's here, I behave I behave in nothing I behave in nothing but an adult motherly manner. However, my thoughts and fantasies about him are far from motherly. This has bothered me for months. This has never happened before. I know I have to cope with it like anyone else with a secret crush. But I feel like such a fool. Am I abnormal? Have you ever heard of a mom falling for a kid the age of her children? Please don't make fun of me. I feel silly enough already. And please don't even mention which state this letter came from. Signed, Smitten. I think this is one of those cases, let me just say up front, where the gender of the person has something to do with how this letter is handled. A guy writing a letter saying he wants to plow his son's girlfriend at 19 is looked at upon as far more lecherous than this kind of sweet, kind, well, sweet to me, I don't know, maybe people see it as, as a big problem. But So where do, you, where do you stand on this? I mean... Of the 15 fucking moms that I fucked that were my, my buddy's moms, uh, it just, it, it's, a, it's a road you don't want to go down because the next thing you know, they're like, you know, what, what, what size shirt do you wear? Oh, she started, you know, getting you. Wait, what do you mean? When's my birthday? Why, why, why did you get me a gift? Oh, presents well, from the mom. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You get start getting all that stuff. And it, you know what? The next thing you know, you you go there, and the, it, it, the the daughter's got a black eye, the mom's got a black eye. They've went at it. It's it's not good. There's nothing wrong with them having a black guy, but um. So so this is this is from the pages of Nash's past here. This is interesting to me. How do you? Oh, how, I've never. I would never. Oh. I would. Okay. I would. I would ne- well, I can't say never, but. Not how do you I, look at your friend? I think that would be the weirdest thing that like How do you look at the how do you, how do you like okay so how old are we talking? Like say if it, if, Well, she was 46, he was 19. Okay, so he's 19. So at 19 years old, you're not like 16. 16 you if it moves, you'll hit it. 19 you've got a little bit of a conscience. So and then on top of that, she's not saying she's a widow. I'm telling no, you right, there I'm, might be a yeah, husband. I'm no. telling you right now, if, if if I'm the if I'm the husband, and fucking she's sniffing around some 19 year old guy, and I catch wind of it, it could be death for that dude. So it's like, did you have any friends who had a hot mom that you that you thought about in that way? Yeah. Back in Detroit. Yeah. Uh, and you just you know you can always tell whether they want to do anything or not. Just tell me, do me a favor, push push them together. <laughs> Boom, <laughs> they, they push. Them. It just meant <laughs> that you had in your head, not that it it, it ever uh, was attempted. Nothing was attempted, but 
Just no, like I, the, I, I the told, hot I, mom in town. A couple, couple of episodes ago, I talked about the lady that was I was on, at my, on my paper route. She'd always, man, fucking, I swear she dressed, you know. She always had the blouse on with, with, with the, the low-cut lace bra with, with the half nip showing. And, and I, you know, it's just, you, and you're thinking like, if I make the move, is the husband going to pop out with a, with a fucking steak knife or, you know. God, I can't, I'm, I'm thinking, I bet, like the kids on my block that I hung out with, their fucking mothers look like something out of it, like the creature from the Black Lagoon. I, I can't think of one. There were horror shows, all of them. Yeah, it would have been it would have been a fun a fun thing to explore, but um, I, I I I don't think. Sorry to anyone who still who knows me that's listening, but yeah, none none of your moms would have would have cut the mustard. Let's take a time out right now and tell everybody what I'm doing in my real life. Save with Conrad.com. That's how I spend my days helping people save money. And I would love to help you save some cash as well. We routinely help our podcast listeners save five, six, seven, even 800 bucks a month. It's not uncommon for us to help families save more than a thousand dollars a month, but how much money can you save? It's free to find out right now at save with Conrad.com. Let me read one of our many five-star reviews from you. This one comes to us from David in Pennsylvania. He left us five stars and had this to say, Dan was very knowledgeable and found ways to get things done when I was being complicated, very professional, but at the same time, personal to assure me of the process. Lord knows with my job and unexpected circumstances popping up, she always found a solution and put my mind at ease. Guys, it's all about customer service. We want to show you how easy it is to accomplish your financial goals. Maybe you need a little cash infusion right now. We can get you the cash you need and show you how to skip your next two house payments. That's right. No payments for two months and come April 1st. Guess what? You're going to have a cheaper monthly payment. If you can hear my voice and you're in a 30 year loan or you've got credit card debt, it's not a matter of if we can save you money, but a matter of how much, but maybe best of all, one more time, you don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. And we don't say no, we say not yet, but here's how, you know, where you want to be. You want to pay your house off. You want to get out of debt. You want to retire on time. You want to make sure your kids aren't burdened with student loans. And maybe along the way, we want to upgrade our house a little bit, put in a new bathroom, maybe put in a pool. We can help you do all of that at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lender. Seriously, check out our reviews and our A-plus rating with the BBB at conradreviews.com or get yourself a quick quote right now at savewithconrad.com or call us toll-free, 888-425-0105 or email me directly, Conrad at SaveWithConrad.com. Now, let's get back to the show. Saw a lot of guys on TV last week that might have been using the FitBot app when I watched Raw. God damn it, three hours. Three. Christ. Raw, Raw 30. <sighs> Raw 30. And as I like to say, and I was there when we blew out the candle the first time. Yeah, huh? First, was, the yeah. first anniversary, right. Yeah. This was um I always dig when they do the the throwback stuff and so I always give it some of my time. Now you weren't there, most notably, I, I would like to point Correct. out. I was I was, they, I was they I was generously uh Mr. Pritchard uh reached out and asked if I'd like to come and I just said that, you know, it, it's a really long day, uh to go to TV when you're doing something like actually on the active roster and going to have a match or a segment or it's a fucking it's like building the pyramids if you're going to be playing a hand of cards how do you think you would have been used I sure I I can't be out there with DX because I'm too much of a dick they all said they were too old. I'd have fucking headbutted that big <laughs> motherfucker in the forehead. I mean, so I'm no, I'm not, I'm not backing down. So send me home. I'm, I'm not doing that. I don't want to be in. I'm glad I didn't go because I didn't see where the fuck I could have been used. I didn't either, and I was thinking about you it. When I was watching it. I mean, I just I don't see where I could have been used. So they opened with Hogan. 
which you know you can't go wrong for the pop, right? When the when the red and yellow comes out. I mean, but make sure <laughs> when you, when he does come out to give him fucking a mic that doesn't work. You just ha- have to see him, <laughs> and then have and then have the guy with the mic in the background look like fucking uh, Jack Ruby. Like trying to trying to position himself past the the fucking sheriff with the cowboy hat to get the shot on fucking Lee Harvey. He's t- trying to give him the fucking. Uh, come on, man! It's Hulk. Fucking you! You, you couldn't have, you couldn't have checked one two one two before the fucking pyro. Yeah, it's incredible that they added the that dead. That's night. pretty fucking. Uh, or or. Was it done on purpose? I was bah, just bah, gonna bah. say, but the click wasn't there. You weren't there, so we can't. Or was I? Or were you? That's true. Very good. <laughs> Jimmy Hart doesn't seem to age. He. Uh, I, I wonder if you pulled those sunglasses off. If you'd see the goddamn Crypt Keeper under there. Just keep but, on dancing, baby. Yeah, he's he still he still looks exactly like he did. The. Uh, they had some nice packages. They put. Uh, I'm not Ooh, talking easy. about the, the talent there. <laughs> um, they put together some nice packages over the yeah. last thirty years. I like to yeah. see that stuff. So pulled up some uh, yeah. good stuff from. Uh, from the, you know what I never noticed? They showed the the moon salt and pin when Pac when he first came in, yeah. and they put him over Scott. He like buries he, his face is like buried in his crotch. I mean that's it was. He hits him with the moonsault, gets the pin, pulls up the legs, and I guess... That, that wasn't even called a moonsault back then. That was just called sexy time. Well, <laughs> it sure was, because that 69 action that got the, the, the pin fall. Somebody was, asked me... Uh, uh, God, what did I do? I, I, I see that. Maybe it was on Twitter. They said, were you friends with, with, with uh, Sean Waltman when he... I'm like, yeah... He's running out the fucking building with the with the, the with the cash, and I've got the, the the town car backed up to the uh, to the. I think that was in Poughkeepsie that they had that. But uh, yeah, he he plopped right in the car. Oh, I saw that question. Somebody said, uh, "Were you part? Was he part of the click yet?" Yeah, right. Wasn't that the question for that? Yeah, but you he were, had just yeah. come in. I mean, that was his first. The first work he did was with Scott, wasn't it? I, but he 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 was uh, people people don't. Uh, I saw uh, a, a part of like maybe eight minutes of, of Taker on Rogan, and he was just saying like people think that we just do TV. He said, especially back in the day when we did three hundred days a year. He said we did three days of TV for the month, and then we were on the road for the next twenty one days. That's true, you know. So that's the whole thing. So when when uh, when Pac came in, he was just working house shows. I mean, I saw the Dingo Warrior at Joe Louis Arena probably a year before the Ultimate Warrior was on TV. Right, and that's older gear. He was in the blue gear when he first when came he first in. came in, right? Yeah. And he, and, uh, I don't, did did he have eyebrows in that in that match? Yeah, that was a little later. <laughs> that that he's got the eyebrows there, yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying if if we if we find a picture of him oh, in that oh in, the, in that in, for, in the in Scott the blue, match, I, I'm just wondering if Ooh. they if the, if that's already went down because that was his 21st birthday, and uh. they 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 gimmicked him and and cut one of his eyebrows off. Yeah. Um. It, that'd be a good. Uh, oh, see, no eyebrows. And wh- and where was the yeah, where was this match? The, the was that the Scott match? I don't know, but that was that was El Paso City when that went down. I have to look at my notes. That's when, that's, when, that's when Kid joined the. He got his eye eyebrows. Uh, uh, it looks like he's missing eyebrows there to me. That's his old Lightning Kid gear there. Yeah. Before he went one, two, three on us all. But um, <clears throat> the uh, I dug the ECW chant in Philly. They must have prepped Heyman for that because he had the 
He had a cool retort for that. Well, he knew it was coming. Yeah. And uh, now, wouldn't you have sent out Dead Man Undertaker? He came out as Harley Undertaker. No. No, you wouldn't have done the fucking no, hat, the whole no, deal? No, no. No, because that's a, that's a completely... Th- that, that fucking... Whatever that cat's L.A. fucking L.A. Yeah, Ray, whatever, LA, yeah, yeah. whatever his fucking name is, he might be able to fucking say something to fucking, you know, L- L.A. Knight might be able to say something to fucking American Badass, the fucking the, the Taker, dude. You're getting Fiend ain't coming out, Ray ain't coming out, nobody's coming out. You're getting tombstoned right in the fucking middle of the fucking ring. Like, you can't, you can't, you can't add, like, Mark's not fucking garnish. No, but that, but that wouldn't, that would have got the pop of the night. That would, the, uh. Yeah, but it would have taken away from Bray. Dead man taker. He could have shared him. He still could have shared LA. Ah, like well, he did. So he been he been that, him talking him saying that right there, like that was like, that's what did he say? And I mean, I could I I'm I actually took co- like several fucking classes in the military, and I can read fucking lips. Yeah, and uh, he said he looked at him and said, "So you ever fuck any of your?" Friends, moms. friends, moms. <laughs> see, that's the. See, that's you, you, you read it too, right? Yeah, I did. At the end, you like, can see no it. No military Every, training, and I saw that. You can see, you can see that. Just you ever fuck any? Of your... Yeah. I it's still amazing. That, that man. It, it's amazing how how like in sync our show is with Raw. Right. Exactly. We. We have the same sensibility. Well, because Paul's in charge, obviously. Right. So, and I, like, I, I did think I did pop and put, when he said, oh, "We don't have." He said, hey, "You think it's easy booking this shit?" I fucking I was. I'm gonna get to that. DX's segment was that, ultra. No, I was very good. It was I, great. Now you remember when they did the last reunion when when DX came out, and I was very critical of the segment because I didn't think. I thought it started well where they wanted to kind of get the band back together and Paul was like, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. And I thought they could have done that through the show. They did it once and then they put them in the ring at the end. This was perfect because it was that old school sensibility. He was clearly ad-libbing a bunch of shit. That way I popped like crazy when he <laughs> called Road Dog Butterbean. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Now, I thought, I, I thought with Kurt having the, um, the sweatpants, with the sweatpants on, that he was going to, like, those were going to unsnap, and he was going to have on the Mr. Ass shorts. Oh, for Billy. That would have been funny. For Billy. That would have been yeah. funny. But I guess they're not going to give. They looked, I mean, Sean should have had the fucking DX t-shirt underneath the jacket. Well, like, what's the deal? Now, why, you know, why the Outlaw Josie Wales fucking deal? Like, I know that's how he, but you're in the ring now. You're playing your old character. Can you lose the hat? I, no, I, 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 I thought it was cool. It just I seemed mean, out of place based on everybody else. I think it's a McGraw move. You know, McGraw doesn't take his hat off. All right, but at least the teach fine. Uh, at least the T-shirt, right? Yeah. Now, this fucking guy, he I, I'm sorry, but he, I, I mean, he's not frightening to me. The fucking whatever. Well, how many are today? I mean, you just. Especially the fucking two, uh, his two bodyguards. <laughs> yeah, you know, fuck. I come out of a cold lake bigger than those motherfuckers. Yeah. Look at his mouth. Oh, stop! Look at his mouth. Oh! I see a little tongue in there as well, can, popping yeah. that cheek out. And by the way, fucking really, Mohawk, the Imperium uh, um, faction confronting yeah. DX. When he go, did go, when go, he go, did go, the go, booking go. thing and he uh, and they brought out Teddy for a half a second, I thought Russo might come out when he said, "I need help booking this." I don't know their relationship with him these days, but um, oh, you got to give Teddy a rub. Made it a six man player. He made it a six man. 
Yeah, no, I, I actually that was a, <coughs> not because it's my boys either, and I thought fucking Kurt did a hell of a job. You know, Kurt. He Kurt, did. You know, Kurt. Kurt's. I mean, Kurt is so fucking great at everything: interviews, comedy. Not a better worker ever in the ring. There's never been a better worker in, in, in the ring than him. And he, once again, here's a guy that came in with a broken neck. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, here's a guy that came, he came in damaged. You know, so. Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't know uh, Kurt with the comedy thing. I didn't know how that would work, but he was great. I mean, he oh, was. He, remember when he had he the little was, cowboy hat and all that shit? And the little fucking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah he's not afraid. Yeah. His, I mean, his earliest. So, was, so Steve, largest gate in the history of WWE was last night. For a, for a raw, it can't be. That motherfucker was packed. Oh, it, Royal, oh, la, oh large, the, large, in the history of raw. Of raw, yeah. Okay. Nineteen thousand people paid. Wow. That I mean, the difference between a house with fourteen thousand. And a house with nineteen thousand is—it's so evident. I mean, it's just like fuck. When they did the beauty shot, <clears throat> and it just kept going and going and going. I thought, I said, "What did they CGI this?" Hmm. It was like I watched the uh, the Forty Niners game, and you know, that fucking Levi Fields a big motherfucker. And yes, that's it a, is. That's Some the one. Shots, that, that's yeah. the last time I I went to the ring. Was when we came down with the NWO against DX in the uh, in the Triple H Sting match, and I'm, I was looking when they, they did that aerial view of that motherfucker, and I said, "God, man!" I said, "I just thought it was the moment that made it feel that big." I'm like, "No, that's a big motherfucker. Mm-hmm. It probably holds 80." It's wide too. It's it spreads yeah. this way. A lot of stadiums are go straight up. This is. Uh, the the shot they had from the helicopter or whatever in uh, the unfortunate cowboy game, um, yeah, the size of it was was very evident. Um, let me see. I'm looking at some statistics here. Raw thirty delivers highest domestic gate in history of Monday Night Raw. There it is. And uh, all right, that was surprising. If I would have been, been there, roars, I'm just I, I, I would have made reference to the fact that, oh, fuck, it's so great to be back in this motherfucker. It's the same place I blew out my quad. Absolutely correct. Yes. Ugh. That alone told me, don't fucking, you, you know that American Airline Delta thing where they fucking, they, they stopped it before they hit on the runway? Yeah, that, that they wouldn't have on this motherfucker. They would have fucking got me. I tore my bicep in Philadelphia. It's like, oh. I got in that fight with me and Sullivan fought those fuckers out by Geno Stakes in yeah, Philadelphia. That's right. Uh, that's not your city. No. My wife uh, shows me something the other day. She's like, she's like, somebody posted something about Kevin. What does this mean? I was like, what is it? She's like, oh, they said, you know why he's not at Raw? I said, well, because he didn't want to go. She's like, no, it says touch Kevin. I said, well, touch it. It was on someone posted on Facebook, and you touch it, and then it goes to the shot of you with the quad. Touch Kevin, blows the quad. I, it was too much to explain. I said it, it. He got hurt one time. He got hurt in Philadelphia, where they had Raw. Yeah. All you need to know. No, I just and on top of that, I I don't know anybody on the crew really anymore, or any of the workers or anything else. And I really don't want people that I don't know coming up to me and saying, I'm sorry to hear about your son. It's like, why, why would I put my And I know what the payday is going to be. You know? I know what the payday is going to be. The payday is going to be, you know. <laughs> not not worth the aggravation? Is that no, where we're going with that? No, not even. No. No. Well, you're right. I mean, people... Of course, would have wanted to well, you offer know what? wishes, and, and, you and, know. and for those people that didn't get a chance to see me, uh, especially live, I'll be at the Pensacola Comic Con last weekend of February. You can go see me there, 
and I'll, get, I'll, I'll keep you updated on all my personal appearances. So that way, if you want to come by, and please don't tell me you're sorry, because I know you're sorry. Because nobody would come up and say, oh, I'm really glad to hear your son passed away. So It's just one of those things. Yeah, but it's, it's just, just one of those things. It's, it's going to yeah. happen. It's going to happen. Don't you think John Holmes got tired of people saying, God, you got a big fucking cock? Yeah, I don't know that I would, but he probably did. He did, yeah. Bigger than a red box, smaller than a Buick. Maybe the Buick Electra. Maybe the Buick Electra. <laughs> God, see, way to bring it. Way to bring it all the way back, buddy. Bring it home. <laughs> now the poker segment. They kept going to the poker segment. Yeah, it did nothing. They had such a great. They they used first of all. All right. The DX segment was entertaining, first of all, because of the personalities involved, and they put some thought into it. But they also tied it into an angle, something they were doing, right? So, well done. Use the legends. Advanced a current storyline. Big points for that segment. Um, the the goddamn the the card thing. It's and nothing was even prepared. I don't think. It, you know, the, well, Dallas the, did have the Royal Straight Flush. So fucking what? Well, he won. Yeah, I know, but no, no, not not relevant to his to his time in the why, federation. If, in why any does, way, right? Why, why does Otis have cash in front of him? He hasn't bought. He hasn't. He hasn't decided whether he's going to buy in yet, or what's what's the? Oh, those are maybe those are his winnings. No, he would have had chips, right? Yeah. Yeah, these, they clearly don't play poker, I guess. But, um. Yeah, nobody had, yeah, I've been a late, and Byron's got fucking stacks. He's got stacks over on his side. Yeah, I don't know. I just could have done something with the segment other than it's just a way to get people on camera, I guess. But I, don't know, I just wish they would have done a little. The, the IRS thing, I guess, was cute, right? After the winnings and. Mike yeah, leans but, in I mean, and says, pay your taxes. Yeah, but then, and then he says, everybody's got a price, and it's just like, God, man, that's like fucking, that's a, that's a million dollar man. That's fucking Ted DiBiase. Like, that's all you got? Yeah, my point exactly. I heard, who's, who sang that song? Is that all there is, my friends? Then let's keep dancing. I think Kevin Nash sang We'll that. bring out the blues and have a ball. Is that all there is? Steve, can you isolate every time Kevin has sung? We're going to put out an album. <laughs> I need you to put it to a, a track. Can you sample it? <laughs> um, Who sang that? Is that all there is? I, I don't know that I even know the song. Somebody, uh, somebody looked that up. Yeah. There, I think the rendition wasn't as familiar to me as maybe the uh, the original was. I, I think it's a. I know a French dude sang it, but there was like some woman that sang that. That's that's famous. It's from some fucking B. Arthur. Let's see here. You look it up. Type the lyrics in. It'll 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 come up. Maybe play a few bars of the actual song. Here, I'm, what the hell I'm gonna, you're I'm gonna, about. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I do to drive my. This is what I, I do all day long to drive my wife insane. Is that all there is? Song. She doesn't like when you voice text. Is that all there is? Song. No, she hates it. Is that all there is? Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee. Okay. Let me give you a little bit. I I do know the song now. Fuck, bitch, sing the song. You can, you can slide ahead a little bit if you want. To the, don't bore us, get to the chorus, to quote Paul Stanley. Yes. Then let's keep dancing. We'll bring out the cards and have a <laughs> poker segment. And I sat on my couch and said, fuck yeah, Nash, you made the right call. So, did you hear back from anyone? Was Vince at the taping? I did not. Uh, I, I wouldn't think he would be. I didn't even, that didn't even, even 
If, if, if well, he would have been a year ago, right? If I would have known Vince was going to be there, I still wouldn't have went. But I would have been swayed because I have, you know, just to say, hey. But I know that I'll see, like, Raw, especially I would have flown in the day of. So early morning, Raw into Philly. Would have probably got there around 2 o'clock to the building. Walked in, and Paul would have been already in mode. Everybody, Sean would, like, everybody would have been in, in mode. Doing doing work shit. Working, yeah. So no 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 time to to, to fuck around, and um, it's like I, I can go to Mania. Like I'll see those I'll, I'll see everybody I'll see my friends at Mania, and there's a chance I can catch them where we could just all go out and have a steak, mm-hmm. you know something like that. I mean I want to catch up with my friends. I don't want to be at TV. Gotcha. Yeah. You should do one throwback show where, like, you guys get fucked. Like, you, you and Sean do the take the fucking somas and wait 20 minutes to go out till they kick, or go out and go home when they kick. And do, do a real throwback fucking show. Sean could shit in something. Do a real could, throwback we show. Could, we could fucking now see. We could have fucked the, 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 that. What's the, the name of that group that came out against uh, DX? Ethereum, Ethereum. Oh, it? Imperium. Yeah, yeah, Imperium. Okay, Imperium. We could have fucking completely fucking. Ex- Paul could have easily fucking hooked that motherfucker for his finish. Sean could have fucking backed up and super kicked that one motherfucker. I could have kicked that other fucker and and and, and need him in the in the stomach and fucking power bombed him. We could have squashed their fucking run right there. We could have fucking ended their whole shit. Standing across from them, you would have been. You would have got the fucking pop of a lifetime in Philly if you just reached out, fucking hit their knees, broke, fucking pop their quads. Each one of them just go right down the line, boom, 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 and they all yeah. go down. As I reach and my quad blows again, like oh, fuck. no, that's the thing. You, you, yours stays intact. Yeah, my, I, my. It'd be actually great if I went to go across and I fucking grabbed my thigh. But that would have been funny if you teased it. If, if I would have went and across, then went, oh, and then no, and then went down and that got up. Oh, did the whole? <laughs> yeah, just did the whole and have him like pull me at the end of the fucking segment. Have him pull me out on a fucking stretcher. I would have. I would have had you tease it like you're out of no, it. I would have. I would have. And... I would have went all the way with it. <laughs> what, what, what are the chances of that? And I, I, Smarten up the announcers. My God, he blew his quad 23 years in the day here. Would have pushed us in the ratings even further, I think. Uh, absolutely. Hey, guys, Tony Schiavone. Need to call a timeout real quick. Wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling what happened when listeners for a while now about all the cool things happening over on adfreeshows.com. On a brand new edition of Insiders, Gary Juster sits down with Conrad to discuss his decades spent behind the scenes in AWA, NWA, WCW, and ROH. I don't think it was a battle with Eric so much on uh, TV versus house shows. It was a matter of if they're not making money, we got to figure out, you know, something else. You know, we just can't let it bleed like that. We go one-on-one with WWE Hall of Famer Teddy Long as he joins Mike Chioda for a special edition of Monday Mailbag. And so I'm tired, man. I'm really tired, but I don't want to let Mike drive because I already know, <laughs> you know, I, I already know how he drives. So anyway, I just couldn't take it no further. So I said, Mike, you know, go ahead, and, you know, t- you know, take us in. So I got in, let Mike start driving. I guess, man, I went right to sleep because I was tired. So I guess maybe 10 minutes into that ride, all of a sudden I wake up, we're like in a tailspin. <laughs> Royal Rumble season is here, and we watch back the most memorable Rumble of all time, featuring the most iconic robe of all time, alongside the nature boy himself. Um, I mean, there was only one Olivia Walker. She was classic. and um, But I, I just, out of nowhere, I just decided to... Um, to pick that color and black, you know, here's the deal. I, I, I've never had a great physique, and you know that black makes you look leaner. So black on black, black boots. So I went to, I went to black a lot after about 40, age of 41. <laughs> that very simple, honest answer. That's just a small taste of what we got waiting for you. With four levels to choose from, see for yourself. 
why ad-free shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adfreeshows.com. Oh, but let me tell you. Uh, what did you think about the Uso, uh, Sa- Sami Zayn thing, the trial? The Sa- Now, all right, so I wasn't going to cover any of the non-legend stuff, but um, I-, I don't know. I- I- I'm kind of lost with-, with-, with some of that stuff, and I don't know. I mean, uh, what do you think of Sammy? Let me just ask you that. Um, he's he's just so different and unique that I I dig him. Okay, I mean he's just not, you know, he's like a ginger Castro. Yeah, I, I get. You know, there is this thing that happens though every once in a while uh, to me, and you know, I'm by no means an authority, just a fan, I guess. But you got to being a wrestler is more than the activity in the ring. There's an aura. There's a unless you like the comedy spot guy and and I'm not talking about that or you're doing jobs. There's an aura. There's a presence. There's something you have to give across. You can call it danger. Um, You got to be different. It helps to feel that. God, if you weren't doing this, I don't know what you'd be doing. Maybe you'd be in the circus. So I I, I don't know if Sami Zayn is enough of that for me, I right. guess. He is different. I, I'll give you that. But um, I guess uh, super relatable to fans was a comment from, from Wes. I, I suppose there is that relatability. The Ron Jeremy thing could be me. Fucking Christy Canyon, right? If it's If it's Ron, could be any of us. But I don't know. I, I I think that I'm from a time where I wanted my wrestlers to be superheroes or supervillains. You know, I didn't I didn't need the Brian Danielson thing. You know, when I was a young fan, um, I didn't want anyone who had a sh- who showed me I had a shot at being in the ring. I wanted it to be all DC Comics or Marvel Universe things for me. I wasn't a comic book kid, but I was into wrestling, so they were the they were the superheroes. So. I guess I've been spoiled by that time, the time of Kamala and Andre and Hulk and Randy and Perfect and Rick and you know, I guess Sami Zayn's on that list too, somewhere. I just I, I just think that well, number one, like the thing that like, and I I know I overanalyze like shit all the time when I watch it. But Heyman comes out first, and he and he puts out the prosecution, right? And this mm-hmm. is the, this is Roman's fucking guy. Mm-hmm. This is the fucking the, the 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 brain trust of the family, mm-hmm. you know. This is fucking Robert Duvall, <laughs> and he fucking he puts out his fucking shit, and then the other guy, the USO, stands up. He goes, "Well, I I want to I want to do my defense." And fucking To Kill a Mockingbird, Gregory Peck stands up, and next thing you know, fucking Roman saying not guilty. Well, what's that do for Paul? Oh, as far as the figure uh, represented there, you yeah, just fucking basically you might as well have fucking ate a ate a fucking plate of shit. Right. That was that. It, it, it's like. Yeah, interesting. I don't know. Yeah, Brock. Brock. I don't want to uh, skimp over that. It's cool seeing Brock. I was always a fan, but see, there again, Brock fits the mold in my oh, mind. Oh, fucking Brock is Brock will be money till fucking yeah, yeah. I think the fact that the guy just and he's done a lot of impressive things, but to me is like. Never to have played football and to make the practice squad for the Vikings. Oh. I mean, that's like, you're fucking superhuman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's badass, no question. Not that you fucking, like, got out there and, and fucked around. 
you were you were good enough where they thought fucking a year or two we'll we teach this guy how to fucking how to read everything but nobody can fucking stop this motherfucker off the line mm. i mean right. that's a fuck how old is he now he looks like he looks like he could go right now how, how old is he would you say i uh, 46 Oh, 46. Okay, so that's younger than I How old is he? 45. All right. Fuck, I I had no idea. (laughs) Wow, Roman Reigns is only 37. You'll be making money for another 10 years. Absolutely. Absolutely. Put that money away. You can uh, can make... uh, You see, now, the product now... Well, let me ask you. If you came in, you're 35 years old, let's say, right? You're you're in the Roman Reigns uh, echelon, and you're working Wait, on. You, am I am I completely healthy? Because I, bro- I, bro- um, I broke into the re- I broke into the wrestling business with 12 knee surgeries underneath my belt already. So, well, is any professional professional wrestler at 35 ever totally healthy? You, if you've been doing this for 10 years in these rings you're not going to be totally healthy i I was crippled at 35 well you which you you had basketball though so you're you're an extreme case because you're so am am i you know you're working you can work all right you're roman reigns you're you're a roman reigns type i don't want to use him because i don't want anyone to think we're being specific about the money that we're talking about but so you're 35 37 you've been on television 10 years you're you know top product wwe and you're you're a name that's always going to be mentioned when they talk about you know the greats of WWE. You can go what can you go another you can go another ten years maybe competitively five five yeah five, at that point it's just like cause sooner or later you're gonna fucking it it it, it it becomes cumulative where it starts to affect first thing it affects is your workouts. Mm. It starts to affect your workouts. You just can't. You're fucked up. Something's wrong. You're, you've had it. Uh, once you get a, a, a really bad rotator cuff uh, uh, surgery, you know you're, you're fucked. Um, but then again, you know I'm, I'm looking at things like when I worked, and when I worked, you know you you didn't do less than 200 days a year, and these guys now, you know. It's, you know, Steve saying fucking, you know, 10 years if you do 50 matches a year. Yeah, probably. Well, I was going to say, can't, wouldn't they do something like where you're, I don't know, they, they tell you you could have like f- four pay-per-views or something like that. They make you commit to four, six pay-per-views and maybe just TV. I don't know how many house shows they do now, but. Enough. I mean, it's. So you're you're forced basically to have to retire before forty five. Not on a reduced schedule. Oh, so the reduced yeah, but I mean, how how much further over forty five could you do? Fuck, I can, I can go. I can go to fifty. I can go to fifty. Shit, I fucking was torn to shreds and went. <laughs> Went yeah, to, that, yeah, you know, that's went, true. Went, went to went to fuck whatever the hell I went. But did you go longer than you should have, physically speaking? That was day one. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, but I remember when I when I, I finally put that picture up of me sitting there with my fucking caved in knees and everything else before I got my knee replacement. And people were like, "How the fuck did you work like that?" I said. Yeah, and all you motherfuckers sat there all those years and said, "Ah, oh, he's lazy, and he's a no motherfucker. I'm fucking marathon man. Guess what? I didn't get the fucking oil of clove. It wasn't safe yet. Every night I went to the fucking ring, it's it wasn't safe. safe. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'm just, I look at these guys, and I wonder how, like, I'm so used to pain. I, I, I'm so used to pain, I think I could give birth. Matter of fact, this morning that pine cone I passed, fucking, whoo! Do you have a little? Do you have a little uh, hemorrhaging? Do you have nah, a little tearing? Do you no, have a little tearing? No, man. But I tell you what, man, that motherfucker came out like a baby's head. 
I fucking thought I was going to pull that turd out and smack it, get us to fucking cry. It wasn't a Viking boat. It was a pine cone. It was a pine cone. Inverted. <laughs> so, uh, to my point, uh, y- unless you are... Now, someone like Roman Reigns, right, top of the, He's fine with money. He's he'll he'll be okay. But if you're not working at that level at 35, 37 years old, you're going you're going to have to consider life after television. Some someone working, I don't want to throw in any real names, but someone who doesn't have that top run who's it's not going to be a household name for the company. Not a Roman Reigns. Yeah, but not what are you going to do? Nash. What are you going to do? You're not going. You're not going to make fucking. If you're making a hundred and fifty, like I, I saw like Dax, uh, put on. I was on. I went through his Twitter, and I think he. It was like they like the offer they gave them at WWE was like one fifty, one seventy, one ninety for three years. You know, for a tag. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's what they pay. That's like, it's pretty fucking hard for a normal human being to make $150,000 a year. I mean, that's, that's decent coin. Yeah, it is. I was blessed. I mean, I made that in 88 fucking at the strip joint. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's different. But okay, so let's see what is this. Oh yeah, one twenty-five, one fifty, one seventy-five. One fifty, one seventy-five. Okay, right. Looking, those of you listening, looking at some. That's two thousand nineteen numbers. No expenses at all. This says. How's that possible? What does that mean? That means that all they're picking up is your plane tickets. Oh, no expenses covered. Yeah, I thought this worker was saying that. They had no expenses. It's all expenses. It's it's hotels. It's it's your rent a car. It's your yep. When when I when Scott and I buying got, health insurance probably. When Scott and I got to um to to Turner, I mean it was like f- first class air, um, four star hotel had to have its a restaurant, you know. Full service restaurant, you know, on on site, luxury rental cars, you know, king king size, you know, king size luxury rooms, you know, we had our own rooms, preferably, you know, uh, adjoining, and then we would both pick up the Cadillac and then give like Mysterio and Conan those guys one of the Cadillacs to drive, and then we drive the other one. Mm. But we're also not talking about 150, 125, 175 no. here. Fuck, that would have been <laughs> shit about a month. <laughs> you know, at the end, fuck. And if you're going out to eat, you're probably going somewhere you, you know, you can enjoy yourself a little bit, have a steak. When, when, Maybe when, not on the road. I don't know. I, I mean, there's a lot of. Scott and I were also, man, we weren't afraid to, to drop down and get 12 egg whites, two chicken breasts. Fucking some steamed hash browns at a Waffle House three times a day either. Okay. You know? Tell them to use, don't put, don't use the fucking low melt, use the fucking waffles, waffle spray on the egg whites. Yeah. You can, the Waffle I mean, House, that, that's you the can, You can actually, you, yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can eat clean, man. Well. A couple hmm. of shakes. When you want a steak now, Kevin, Backyard Butcher oh. is in your life. I just, I just, I've, I've almost completely annihilated that whole box that they sent me. Oh, my God. It was so great. I have uh, some, uh, Dom, Steve, I sent somebody a video. I, was, I unboxed it because I was so impressed with, um, with the size of it. So I knew, oh, yeah, I had, what do we have, eight fillets? Uh, a couple of uh, Eight burgers. bone-in ribeyes. Yeah, burgers. Uh, New York strips, two T-bones. Yeah, it's incredible. 
if one of you have that, you could bring up the the unboxing of, of it, and it's, and that's that's one of the packages you can get. It, this wasn't just because we were hosting this show. That's one of their. Uh, it's, it's called the carnivore. The carnivore pack. <laughs> yeah, whether it is or it isn't, it is. Fuck man. But uh, the wait is over. Quality steak, free shipping, right to your house. Period. Done. Backyard butchers, restaurant quality steak. Um, and it's now available online. Get steakhouse quality bulk meat specials responsibly sourced from American farms delivered right to your door. And right now for a limited time, Backyard Butchers is offering our listeners 15% off free shipping and four free ribeyes for life with every subscription. 15% off. Free shipping and four free ribeyes for life with every subscription. Imagine open up, opening up a box of high-quality steak, being able to recreate the steakhouse experience right in your backyard. And if you bought that meter gimmick uh, we told you about, you will make the perfect steak. Okay, it's less than grocery store prices. That's exactly what you're going to get when you order from Backyard Butchers. Okay, um, I cook my fillets first. Uh, my family loved them. Went through those uh, in the first two days. Um, they were great, and so is the price. Um, the best part is you're going to be, you know, things are going crazy now. Inflationary pricing, let's call it, at the grocery store. You're going to save big on your family's dinner budget. Cut out the middleman. Go right to Backyard Butchers, okay? 100% American beef, pork, and chicken sourced from farms all across the heartland of America, okay? It's fresh, safely packaged, uh, ice packaged, delivered to your door in an eco-friendly, isolated, insulated box. All right, no memberships or subscriptions are necessary, but if you do choose to subscribe, you can cancel any time. All right, but you know what? When you try them once, you're going to want to subscribe, believe me. Uh, get your 15% off now. You're going to use promo code CLICK, K-L-I-Q. Get 15% off your order. Visit Backyard Butchers. Dot com. That's BackyardButchers.com. 15% off your order, free shipping, and four free ribeyes for life if you subscribe. Thank you, Backyard Butchers. Steve put the... So, uh, so the one of the things that I was really impressed was the um, the shipping. The, the, I mean... It, Oh, the packing. Yeah, when, when when I took this, when I you know, because mine sat outside like for a couple, maybe six hours, and I was like, oh shit. So I got home, you know, got in the house, I opened it up. If I was to throw one of those steaks, my wife would have killed her. Absolutely, yeah. It was. I mean, it was like a. And then the great thing is, you put them all in the freezer, and then take them out. Put them in the fridge, and then overnight when you get up, they're perfect. I had I had uh, rib, I, actually the first thing I did was I put uh, two of the burgers in the fridge just to try the burgers first. Yeah, there's and the I got up, Yeah, I got up the next morning and I had two two burgers and twelve egg whites. It was like oh, wow, that's awesome. There we go. There's a t- big ass T bone. Burgers right there. Yeah, burgers were bad. Burgers were good. Look at that box, guys. I mean, they, they, this is no bull. This this is what you get with their uh, with their combo packages. So go on backyardbutchers.com. Don't There's forget the that T-bone. promo. There's That's that big, the T bone. The bone in there. Ribeye. Yeah. So um, check it out. Get your uh, yeah. The dog wanted some. Fuck yeah. There ain't no dummy. And uh, promo code K L I Q. Uh, ask Nash. Hashtag Ask Nash. This is how you can get in touch with Kevin. Not easy to get in touch with Kevin, but this is the place. I just wanted people to know that you've been seeing my, this, this motion going a lot tonight. It's, we didn't it's, ask. Yeah, it's. Not, I'm not jerking. It's just I got a another one of my supplements that I've got to drink at nighttime. So, um, allegedly, well over 400 pounds has asked uh, since we're on the topic of Detroit. And in this same clip, you mentioned the Lions, who missed the playoffs on some technicality BS. Uh, I'll ask this for the next Ask Nash. Do you think it was a good idea trading Matt Stafford for Jared Goff? Well, I mean, in retrospect, 
you know, uh, Stafford, um, I, I really can't say anything too negative about Stafford because he does uh, represent Little Caesars Pizza. <laughs> oh, that's right. He does. <laughs> Home of the Detroit-style pizza. Round. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it took uh, Goff a, a, a season, but, man, he, I, I think with that play action, he, he fits in really well, you know. So, you know, proofs in the pudding. I mean, yeah. we're, you know, we won nine. We, you know, we won nine games. We're nine and eight. If, they, they were they were the betting man's friend this year. Oh, boy. I love. I mean, I, I'm looking forward. I can't remember in my life saying I'm looking forward to the Lions next season. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, you, I, it took me. It took me 63 years to be able to say that. I think Billy Sims was in the backfield last time you might have even thought. No. That. I mean, no? maybe Barry Sanders. Oh, Barry, too. It, we had Barry. True. I mean, yeah. I, I watched the thing the other day on him, and he was. they just showed a couple of his runs. And it's just like you, you, you don't forget because he was so special. No, he, it was like he was invisible at yeah. times. You'd have three defenders, like, jump on, and he like just the, psh, and, and, I'm, and I'm such an old fuck. That I actually remember, like Sayers before he got hurt. Gail Sayers, yeah. Gail Sayers was like, oh, I think he had five touchdowns in one game. Ran back a kickoff, a punt, and had three touchdowns. Mm. Yeah. Gail Sayers. Barry Sanders was was one of those guys who had open field speed, like that unpredictable. Like once he got through the line. You'd look at, you'd have like a cornerback, maybe a linebacker, kind of positioned around him, and you're like, "Well, somebody's gonna make the tackle," and he was fucking gone. Oh. They were behind him in seconds. What's what what? I'm horrible with with teams that I don't follow, but the running back for the for the Chiefs, he's number ten. Does it, who, Is uh, it for, uh, Fournette uh, Pacheco? Yeah. Did you see the play where he got around the outside that last game? No. And fucking, I mean, he's got like four, five, like four, 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 six, like four or five speed. Mm -hmm. He turned the corner, man, and that motherfucker looked like it, it looked like somebody sped up the film. Yeah. And he's like, he's a bigger back, you mm -hmm. know. He's he's probably two seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Slovakia 99, did you have a chance to talk with Chuck Norris backstage at Survivor Series 94? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Good Was guy. Was he a wrestling fan? How many of these guys are wrestling fans when they participate? Versus just taking the game. You know, I mean, who knows? I mean, if, you know, if, if somebody would have called me up and said, hey, you want to be in Texas Ranger, I wouldn't. Walked on set and go, oh, this show sucks. Yeah, yeah, well. But I mean, like, it would have been cool if Chuck Norris was like, it was like, ah, he was a huge Vern Gagne fan, you know, just, or, you know, drop some knowledge. Pat Patterson in the background. Always. Uh, <laughs> Justin. I'd hit, I'd, Pat, I'd hit that. <laughs> <laughs> You got to do it with the accent. <laughs> oh, Tabernacle, I hit that son of a bitch. You, oh, you know, so well, I, I don't understand the, why all the tough talk guys. This guy, though, this fucking banana. Texas Ranger, my ass. <laughs> Justin, Kevin, did you ever meet Andre the Giant? Yes. Was it a One pleasant experience? It, no, well, no, because he was, he was, it, it wasn't. He wasn't much longer for the world. He was. He was actually like he was on crutches, mm. and uh, he was bent over. He was he wasn't as tall as I was. Oh wow! Yeah, he was that bent over. It was very sad. Mister Berger, Kevin Nash, you uh, you have mentioned the visual arts. I noticed you have brought up painting, Picasso, Michelangelo, Pollock. Any other favorite artists or styles of work? If you create, can we see a piece you're proud of? Much love to you, T and Sean. We'll have to, we'll have to pre you can prepare this next week if you can show some of your work. 
Mine is, is all upstairs or given away. I yeah, but I, ship, I don't even. I don't even know if I have any of mine. I, I know there's nothing in my house ha- hanging. There used to be some stuff down here, but I've actually given some of that away. Um, Matisse, I like him. I like his paintings. Um, Monet, did, was that one of, that was already on the list? Water lilies. Um, uh, well, water, he mentioned uh, Picasso, Michelangelo, and Pollock. Yeah, like I, I, I would I would say that um, uh, Dolly, yeah, you know, has a Dolly. The surrealism of, of Dolly. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. Hello, Dolly. Um, Where's my Dolly? Hold on. You know what's great if you go to um, you go to the New York uh, the, the the Modern Museum. For, MoMA. Yeah, and they have. So many, they've got a Picasso that's not Cubism, but they have a, a ton of sculptures that he's done of human heads, and they're all these round. I don't know if anybody's, um, but there are. There's a Picasso uh, in 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 the, in the back. Uh, if you're walking, if you're walking, it would be all the way. It's almost, almost if you just kept going to the right back of, of, of the museum. Of course, they could have moved it, but it was a Picasso, and it was maybe done in 38 or 30, but it's an, a, a tank, and it's going over, it's running, it's a huge painting, and it's going over a, a bunch of uh, uh, soldiers. It, you know, I think it was uh, to represent uh, Germany at the time. It's but not the I, Guernica, is it Guernica? Everyone, the, every, everyone in the painting is, is it's has a round head. It's like you know, it's just it's not cubism. It's this early work. So, I have to see. Uh, yeah, I saw. I got to see. Um, uh, I got to see Starry Night in person. Van Gogh also at MoMA. Yeah, and uh, got very close to it which was I mean there's a guard there you couldn't get too close but what I noticed was about it he didn't paint off the canvas so there is like an edge between the frame and like where his brush stopped so you can actually see canvas on the corner I thought that was a cool little piece of yeah uh, um, didn't paint off the canvas Steve I sent you something I want you to bring up there and um, so okay so is that the one though? no no no. Okay. No. No heads on that there. <clears throat> it could be because uh, it, it, it was a war one. It could have been Guernica. Listen to us. We've turned this into like an art podcast now, courtesy of Mister Burger's questions. Maybe he's yeah, an art but, teacher somewhere. I mean, it's to me like um, I don't know if you if you've ever had a chance to go to the Tate Museum in London. No. But they have uh, God. They've got a. a, a a water lilies that's oh god it must be 25 feet oh long. yeah it's the whole i saw it when yeah. i was at moma i didn't know that i mean i'd always seen water lilies like on postcards and shit. yeah i walked oh into my a room. god it was the room and then i and then so as you're looking at that if you look directly to the right it was the largest pollock i'd ever seen you know so but the tate the tate always has some some really great um you know, every time I've went through there, I've always saw some 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 incredible artwork. I don't know. I, to me, like if if I've got three to four hours, like one of the one of the things I I, I tell anybody that's never been to Amsterdam. So you go to Amsterdam and you go to the Van Gogh Museum, and you walk in and you observe. You know, his art. You go out, you go to a coffee shop, you smoke up, and you go back. <laughs> and you have a different appreciation to Mr. Van Gogh's art. That's excellent. Let me grab my dolly. Hold on a minute. Nicely. Here we go. Here we go. A little artwork. So that's a dolly. This is one of the uh, from the series he did of the... Uh, Dante's Inferno, this is one of the seven rings of hell, the souls exiting hell. 
thought that would be uplifting for my dining room. <clears throat> well, we, we went ahead and I, I made a uh, cross-reference to Lucifer to start the segment, so I don't see why we wouldn't well, there you go. continue. He's an important part of the art world. All right. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you for the, uh, the interlude, Mr. Berger. Um, always good on an audio podcast to be showing some art uh, also. This is incentive yes. for you guys to watch this on, on YouTube. Crypto Gauntlet says, if Sean Waltman were coming into the business today with his skill set and mic work, could he be a world champion? His matches with Brett and Owen were some of the best I've seen. Yes. Very good. Steve Flores. Because a two-time Hall of Famer in, his, in, in our era. He is. He most I, definitely is. I, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's worthy of being a world champion. Steve Flores, we know Kev has been, uh, been known to rock some dope kicks from time to time. What are his favorite shoes to hoop in? Um, the last time I actually played ball before I, I fucked myself up, I was in Nike. I, uh, Nike made Air Max back in, when I was still playing. The Air Max was, was, was a really good shoe. I always liked the shoe that was durable. Like, man, like I, 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 I wear LeBrons a lot uh, and wear some Colby's and some other... Like I, I got some uh, some Hardys. Um, I got a, a couple a couple pair of Durants um, that I wear in the gym. But fuck, man, like th they're great to, to train in. I, I couldn't play ball in half those fucking shoes. Just, oh really? They, yeah. Man, I just I just don't feel like something I could play. You know. Again, you, know, you, you got to. I think that in today's uh, in today's game, you know, I, I think that probably a, a sixth grade kid's getting his ankles taped. You know, so it's a completely different feel once you get your ankles taped and then you put your sneakers on. Oh, uh, that's true. I guess. You know, yeah. as opposed to back in the day when you fucking put on two pairs of fucking socks up to your knees and threw some chucked some chucks on. Some chucks, yeah. Yeah. Remember the ones that you'd pump and they'd fill with air? Oh, Reeboks. Reebok made yeah. those, right? I had That's the Shack Cena. ones when they first came. Yeah, out. Cena, Cena wore those. Those was like Cena was. Oh, that's right. Yeah, remember, he would it was do one the of his gimmick, early, yeah. yeah, one of his early uh, gimmicks he did. Uh, Not, it, it did nothing to improve my game. It's just I would like to point that out too. Yeah, I, I still stayed. I think five it was. Nine. I think it was. I want to think it was D Brown maybe that did that. He pumped up at the uh, at the at the. D dunk, Brown wore the, the black, slam, the all did, black. Did, but didn't he pump up at the slam dunk contest? Oh, you're right. He might have. He did the blind, right? He did. Yeah, the, I think so. Yeah, I like D Brown. Yeah, he was a was he a Miami guy? Miami? Where did he come from? I don't know where he came from. Somewhere in Florida, I think. His mother's vagina. <clears throat> exactly. That's what fucking Sullivan said. As you. As you covet his mother, <laughs> knowing my friend tumbled out of this thing that I'm in right now. Steve, uh, no, we did Steve. Mark Caps, your personal thoughts on Chris Canyon, uh, a very great seller and someone who could have potentially gone more than he did. He was a great worker, mm -hmm. you know. I just, I... I have nothing bad to say about him. I mean, he was he was a great worker. Mm -hmm. You know, he did the, that Ready to Rumble. He did all the Oliver Platt. Uh, he was he was the king. He did all of the uh, uh, the stunt stunt wrestling and that. Ah, okay, very good. Corbin G. I listen to the show every Monday while at work. Bending and shipping auto parts gives me something to look forward to. Uh, what kind of odd jobs did you guys have throughout the years? Odd jobs. Fuck, man. Did you do anything particularly interesting? Well, I, I, I did that way. I worked at that chicken processing 
Like, oh, like, yeah, that was pretty like, hardcore. Like, like, I like, still like, think about what you told me. There was that thing that their heads would feel. It was like this. Feet. So it could, and you, yeah. they, they stuck their head in, and, and, and it fucking went down, and there was a saw, and it fucking sawed their fucking heads off. And then the next thing, they, did, they went through this another area, and this fucking, like, jets of fucking hot steam and shit hit them, and that took their feathers off. Right. And then they fucking went, they went down and they fucking cut them open. These girls fucking cut them into fryer parts, put them in trays, shipped them to me. I fucking took them into this big fucking cooler, or this big heater, cooker gimmick and set them in there and cooked them for 45 minutes, sat down, twiddled my thumbs, opened it up, waited about three, four minutes for it to like, get below 160 degrees in there and then pulled them out and... How was the aroma of this place? Yeah, fuck, man. I, was, I think they were paying me 12, 14 bucks an hour back in, like, you know, 78 to do this <laughs> shit. You know, it was one of those <laughs> University of Tennessee uh, summer gimmick jobs. I was an undercover security officer in supermarkets. So I'd walk around with my badge under the thing, my shirt over my cuffs, uh, looking for shoplifters. Hide in the like the beer freezer and just walk down the line, and you could see down all the aisles because they were rear loading uh, freezers. <clears throat> it was a a mob owned chain of. Uh, uh, I oh, hate that- to say that. I let let's not say that. That's terrible. I should say. Uh, 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 some some folks that got into some trouble owned the chain. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was it was actually a, a breakaway from a uh, waste management company. They just it was a <laughs> shell they put their <laughs> money into seven or eight supermarkets. So uh, occasionally, you know, you'd be working, and then one of the supervisors would come in and go, "There's a truck in the back. I need you to drive that up to Bergen County for me. You don't take any of the highways." And you go, okay, give me the keys, and you would drive a truck up there, and you'd go to a warehouse. They'd unload the liquor. That came right out of the <laughs> supermarket liquor store into some warehouse. And I was in college. What are you going to do? Um, then, I, 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 if it's a wise guy, if he tells me to drive the truck, I'm driving the truck. I'm driving a truck. They took care of us. They, they liked us. We, 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 st- we stopped uh, shrinkage in the stores. Um. And then I, I guess the other job that might be interesting. I was a negative cu- cutter uh, in Manhattan. If, you, if anyone out there don't doesn't know what that is, when you shoot a movie, <clears throat> they make a lot of prints uh, that an editor cuts and that they screen for dailies. But there's only one negative that comes out of that camera, and it's stored. And when the editor chops it up and makes his decisions, every frame has. Uh, keyframe uh, uh, numbers someone would have to match that with the actual negative the 35 millimeter negative and that's what would get sent to the lab and they would strike a thousand prints off of that that would go out to the movie theaters and uh, so I worked at one of these places so we would cut feature films the negative to feature films and it was so harrowing because while you're winding the film down sometimes it would it would snap and you fucking broke the one negative of you know Woody Allen's next movie then you have to the the boss comes in and he's got to look at the frame number call the editor did you use frame KK2275 if he says no all right no big deal it's gonna it would hit the cutting room floor anyway but if it was a frame that he cut into the movie the editor would then have to go recut that scene to not use that frame so it was harrowing from that standpoint I guess that's the most interesting job I can come up with and the I have to. I don't know if you. I don't know if you can pick this up or not. But a buddy of mine sent this to me. Can you guys see this picture very well? Oh, I. I was gonna bring this up. My wife showed me this. She goes, "Woody Allen, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." But Kevin, tell us who that is. Fucking Bruce Springsteen. That's where we are now. The coolest guys in the world look like Woody <laughs> Allen. But I knew I, I knew now. it wasn't I, I, I knew it wasn't Woody Allen because there wasn't an Asian broad behind him. <laughs> yeah, man, that's the boss. God damn it! Oh, my God. buddy Dave Driscoll sent me that last night. It's gonna happen to us all. 
Yeah. That's what, I, that's what, you know what, it, it, he doesn't mind because he ain't fucking, he ain't playing glory days. He ain't worried about that speed ball. Look at that. Wow. He could play him in the film. This is unbelievable. Yeah. You Banan- have to learn to play the clarinet. <laughs> Bananas too. Exactly. <laughs> the geriatric version. <laughs> the shriveling bananas. Jeez. I did get to, that was one of my bucket list items. And in the 90s, I did get to go see Woody Allen play. Uh, he used to play Monday oh, I nights. Thought, at- I thought you were going to say, I, I saw fucking Springsteen in Frankfurt, Germany, uh, with Born in the USA in front of like, Half the crowd was troops. Right. It was like, that was bad fucking ass. Yeah, no, but uh, Monday nights in Manhattan at Michael's Pub, uh, Woody used to play with his little... Uh, his Clarinet? Little, uh, yeah, he used to play with his little jazz band. And Soon Yi was standing at the back of the room waiting. He went up, he played about an hour. They, they were great. He packed up his little case, got off stage, walked out, got in a cab with Soon Yi. And, See, uh, those are the th- those are the things that being in the city that just. You know, Tam- my, my wife and I were talking about that the other day, and we're saying like, there was a time, you know, especially when we d- we didn't have any children, and I was working, like so much, up in the New York area that it would be like, you know. It would have been cool to have gotten a you know, a place, in New York just you know one bedroom just to do it for six months do it just to say we did it mm. but then it was just like yeah but you're on the road 300 days a year motherfucker it's just like so i'm i'm in i'm in i'm, I'm in manhattan by myself i'm like yeah I, eventually I she'd run out of theater and museums and then it's gonna yeah. be let's sell this place yeah well we would never have bought fuck we would uh, i mean that's true we'd all been one of those condos and stuff yeah so anyway so somebody's fucking Third hand co op. The uh, God that you know that, but at that point in my life now, I do a lot of math. I go, all right, so I'm fifty. So if Bruce is, you know, because that the the people that were the barometer of cool for us as guys, you're gonna start looking like Woody Allen. Do you ever fucking see the thing on Instagram now where they'll show somebody and they're, um, it's like a, a picture of them like when they were like 23 and slowly it morphs into what they look like now or they go the opposite way with it? Have you seen any of those? No, and may I never oh see Oh my God, some of them are so fucking frightening. I'm thinking to myself, like I was, I, I was sitting there the other day, and I was saying to myself, and they were talking about the uh, Social Security, and, you know, and the and the GOP wanting to cut Social Security and and cut Medicare, Medicaid, and you know they came, you know they they, and they were talking about the boomers, and like in nineteen, I think I think it started in forty five. Uh, but like in that 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 boomer uh, era, I think there was 140 million people in America, and then the the baby boomers came, and that was 79 million people. So right. basically, uh, half of the population was was born in like 15 years, again, and what it did infrastructure wise, school wise, mm. like they just, I mean, everything had to be reworked because it was such an onslaught of these boomers and then when i was taking uh economics in college the thing they always said was if you could put something of the the opening of a funnel and be able to attract the boomers into that funnel that's how that's how you would get rich because the boomers had the wealth right you know and that was a you know that i mean it was a little bit more complex than that, but I'm just... Oh, the- if it was a class, it would have to last more than 10 minutes, yeah. But exactly. I understand what you mean, but... Yeah, and it's just like, and, you know, now I look at it, and it's just like, like, fuck, old man, like, you're 63 years old. And, 
like you, you, like I can retire. Like I've already got my paperwork from, from you know, from from, from the IRS and everybody else saying, hey, you can retire. Like you can you can take retirement right now. You get Social Security. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, fuck, man. Like I, I'm not old. That, in your head, how old are you? Are you fuck. still 18? No, no, because I'm not stupid as fuck. Um, I am. 35? Okay, that's, all right, so you're giving yourself, okay, you're giving yourself a lot of maturity there. I'm 35? I feel I, if I followed I, I, my I, impulses, I, I, I could I wish, be 18. I should say, I wish I was this wise at 35, but, like, if, if I shut my eyes, and I, even in, in the, as beat up as I am, like, today I train arms, and, like, when I walked out of there, man, I felt fucking I was jacked, fucking huge, full house, you know. And anybody that's ever got into bodybuilding, it's like you never look better than when the sun. It was, it had a sunny day. I got I, I laid out by the pool for 45 minutes. Got a little sun today, and uh, I just turned, man. That sun was coming down, and it caught me perfect and into the reflected. Uh, Mirror that, or not mirror, but the window that's been properly uh, tented, and you look, you know, you look huge, and you're just like, God. And then you drive home, and you go to get out, and your back's all tight, and your fucking arms are shrunk, and you look like a piece of shit. You're like, man, that fucking, I had a 20 minute fucking run on that fucking whole deal. <laughs> but at the same time, man, it's just like, like I just. I just don't see. I just don't see myself as is, like I. I don't see like when do you get to the point of your life when you stop listening to the newer music, stop listening. Like when does it? St- uh, I, and I have buddies, man, that just since ACDC, they just haven't listened. Like that. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a little disconnected from some of the people today. Like my I was wife. In, I was in, I'm like, who the fuck is that? I was in the gym the other day, and, and one of the uh, the owners, uh, young, or his daughter, she's, I don't know, she's 17, 16 years old. And it was a Saturday, and it was just me, her, and one other guy in there. And I walked in, and she was listening to The weekend. So... She she immediately got up and you know she turned it off. I said I said I actually like the weekend. I said you can play them if you want. She's like I love you, man. I love you. So she puts it on. So it, you know the other guys already has heard me say you know just play what you want to play. Because last place she I wants start to start going to a gym. Then exactly. the last place last place she wants you know to be is in this fucking gym. So about. The, 30 minutes later, in walked an older crew of guys, probably, I don't think they're my age, but probably mid-50s. And um, they're like, oh, what this shit? Put something you know, on. And I just said to myself, like, see, man, you just, you, you don't get it. You don't, you don't get it, do you, man? Like it- well, age isn't a number, right? And I always say that. Because when I hear the number, I feel very disconnected from it. I got a fucking AARP card in the mail the other. Apparently, fifty now you get the yeah. Fucking oh, AARP? And, and it, bitch, you, they don't miss it either. I, I mean, fucking threw that across the room. No, fuck that. My man. wife thought she was funny giving me the card. Get that out of here. You know what? That's great though, man, because it's a, it's just the right thickness the for it's just the right thickness for chopping up fucking lines. No, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's like fuck, man. I, I, I don't I don't care. I don't care, like, you know. Yeah, but the, but the number haunts you when you hear the fucking number. Well, sitting here talking, I, I don't feel. I don't feel anything but like I could be twenty five, for all I know. But then those little things that creep in that remind you. The number reminds you. A fucking AARP card reminds you. Not knowing who the weekend is when he's on the radio reminds you. You do. You you stay younger with with pop culture. Clearly, I also had a, you know a musician's son. That's true. You know, so that that alone is going to. But there's so many times now that I'll see something, and what I still do is when I see something uh, on YouTube or I see a band or I see anything and I watch it and I know he dig it, 
I still I still take the the Instagram post and I send it to him. Oh, really? Yeah, I still send it to him because I'm just like, you know what? Like I, I'm I, I'm I'm impulsed to do that. Yeah. So fuck it, man. I'm going to send it to my kid. Like I would have like that those are the, the the small little things that I've noticed now as time has gone by is you do come to the realization that that person is gone because that's very, very difficult. I mean, it's very fucking difficult. But at the same time, it's just like, but they're, yeah, okay, they're gone physically, but they're not, I mean, they're still, if, there's, if you allow them to still, if you function and do things that you used to do with them, like I come down here at 6.15, and I talk to T, I set up, like, it's still, it's still, I go over my notes, you know, like I would when he was down here, like, everything is still the same, you know, because it's just like, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing it because it's some weirdness or anything, it's just that you know, I'm trying to think of who the But fuck that it was. space though, that space was 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 something you and him did together alone. Yeah. You don't do anything else in that location. Nothing. So that was it would be no different if like I don't know if your dad ever took you fishing to a certain spot and it was always just you and him you would feel that presence there. Did I tell the story? I don't know if I told you the story or not or it was it was on the show. But I was talking to somebody, and we were talking about our, our fathers. This is somebody much younger than me, and um, he um, he was saying something. I said, "Yeah, I remember this one time, my dad took me ice skating." And he goes, "What the fuck made that one time so special?" I said, "No, he took me ice skating one time." <laughs> Like, that's what dads did back then. Like, your dad didn't do jack shit with you. I mean, you're, you know, you, he didn't. Your dad just didn't do shit with you. I mean, it was, you know, you kept, you kept your mouth shut. But every, every night, like, I'd, I'd bring him his slippers at, at dinner, and I'd sit in his lap, and I guess fucking I was there for secondhand smoke. I don't know but if I... <laughs> No, I just, well, but he t- he didn't take you like to to see the Tigers play or yeah, he take yeah. you to see every once in a while we go to Tiger. He liked to go to the Tiger games, but um, he, see he he went to, you know he 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 grew up in the Rouge, and um, which is you know not exactly white boy land, and um, but when he was there it was more ethnic, more uh, Polish German mm-hmm. like, like everything else. First wave of immigrants. Yeah. And um, I think I was, I might have been talking to Bischoff. Me and Eric might have been talking about this. And we were saying how, like, we never heard the N-word growing up in Detroit. Just you just didn't hear it. Because if you wanted to tell an off-color joke, you would refer to, hey, I got a Pollock joke. Because the Pollocks, were that was like, like people would 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 lie because if their name it, it'd be in, it, it, you couldn't get away with it because your name would end in S K I S K I yeah it'd be like come on Mikowski oh I swear to God I'm Hungarian <laughs> what do you mean Hungarian I'm hungry Hungarian yeah I'm Hungarian no uh, you're Polak. But uh, yeah, like that was that was the thing. So when I, and, and it was Eric because we we're talking back and forth, and he goes and he busts out laughing. He goes, "Man, he goes, I haven't heard that in forty years." I said, "Of course not, man." I said, "You're talking to Detroit boy. I'm to, I, like two Detroit boys are having a conversation about their youth." <coughs> and Did Eric's, he grow up in, in Detroit? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was Chicago. Okay. No, it, it, no Detroit, and, and more so than I did. Like deeper, you know, deeper in, in Detroit than I did. Oh. Yeah. Well, 
T is with you in that room. Wouldn't it be funny though when you when you finally wrap it all up and you get up there, T's like. Dad, I saw you send me all this Instagram shit. We get Facebook up here, bro. <laughs> you, I haven't seen any of that shit you sent me. You're on the wrong uh, platform. Uh, he, no, because he wouldn't. He, my, he he didn't have Facebook. He was like me. <laughs> so he, he he's getting he's I, he's getting my. Real quick, I got to say this. So the other night, I go to sleep. I, I have been. I took out the recycle last night. Five bottles of wine in the recycle for the in, week. In what period of time? For seven days. Okay. I haven't had a drink now in 10 days, maybe. 10 or 11 days. And that was a Corona light that I had because I ate sushi. And I just, I can't, there's, I have to have beer with sushi. And, um,. I was just like, so I think what's happening is I'm not, I have no drugs in my system, no alcohol, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So I have these, I call them vanilla sky dreams. I mean, they're just like fucking lucid, lucid dreams. And they're Mm. so real. And T is in this dream with me. And I know that he's passed. But I keep running into him, and I, sw- I swear on, on, my, on my son's life, death, whatever, my son, whatever you, whatever you, how you swear, I, I, I swear my painting in the background. Um, this, is, this is the honest God truth. So he tells me that any time that I want to see him, I just have to go to Route 228. And I'm like, what's the significance of 228? He goes, you'll figure it out. So all of a sudden I wake up. I've got to piss to the point where I, I mean, I can't breathe. If I don't get up and, and, and scramble, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be trouble. So I want to grab my phone because in my mind I'm like, if it's 2:28, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna scream. I go take a piss, come back, pick up my phone, turn it over. It's 2:29. It was 2:28 when I fucking got up to piss, and he told me it's always 2:28. The rest of that fucking day. I mean, I was fucking like on a magic carpet because it was like all that shit that happened, who's to say it wasn't like Vanilla Sky? Who's to say that wasn't because it was real, man. It was him, it was him with, he had his glasses on. It was fucking the tea that passed. And I was just like, holy fucking shit. And then I'm thinking, like, man, maybe he fucking bought the fact the old man was gonna fucking kick it. <laughs> he's picking up his he's picking up his game from the fucking from the from the after. All right, hey, Dad, come on, man. You know, I hesitate to look, but that night you texted me in the two o'clock hour that. Um, it wasn't going to go in the other direction. I right. mean, when, when we had texted first, it was, you know, maybe there was some hope, and I was saying, I guess, in retrospect, stupid things, like keep talking to him, you know, whatever. Well, was. Yeah. And, but I got, I was up uh, in the kitchen, and I got a text in the 2 o'clock hour where you said it's shutting down. I hesitate to look at the minute hand, but I know it was in the two o'clock hour because then the next time I heard from you was like six twenty when it when yeah, was it. Yeah, six twenty was it. If it's but two, I'm, two, if I'm it's gonna two, check and I'm not gonna do it now because I'm gonna freak yeah, out. If, if it's two twenty eight, then all of a sudden Kurt Russell's gonna walk in the room and go, "Come on, you know I, you, you know I'm real." What, what's your kids' names? Come on. <sighs> 
Mm. Yeah. Well, I'll, we'll let everybody know next week. Yes. Cliffhanger. This is part of you uh, experiencing this real time. That's a trip, though, that dream. Yeah, that was that was one of those. I tell you, man, I, 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 I'm going to stick with my interstellar. It's there's 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 some some crazy wacky shit out there. But did you do the whole like? Because I'd be going now. Okay, what was your house number growing up? Thirty-two eighty-one. Okay. Uh, none of your properties had a two twenty-eight either. No. Okay. I got to tell you something really funny. They saw a, a guy sent one of my buddies sent me today. It said that. Um, it was like a bunch of facts, and um, like the the second fact was a man's penis is three three of his thumbs. Is is a, a man's penis is equals three of his thumbs, okay. and it goes it goes on to say all these other things, and it, it, and now it's say, saying a woman, 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 and then it says. A man is still looking at his thumbs. <laughs> I fucking popped so fucking hard because I'm reading it going like this. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, everybody, uh, I want to remind you that Click This is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast E, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, and Oliver, produced Steve Steve Kaufman. Graphics by Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash. Copyright 2023, Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, we doing another one? Well, I, what we should probably do is wait 13 minutes and it'll be 2.28 to show. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Everyone play that number. Yeah, 2.28, man. That's our gift for the week. Congratulations in advance. Peace.